okay yeah so i just move very quickly yeah because uh, i need this for you i'm sorry yeah so space travel is one of the human dreams yeah as i told you before yeah and there are many uh, books written and movies written that show the human curiosity to travel the earth yeah in space and also in the past uh, human already try as i said before to understand how the celestial object works uh, as well as the famous late physicists who already passed away yeah not long time ago stephen hawking actually he discovered this Hawking radiation, meaning uh, that a black hole can also emit radiation in the horizon, yeah, near the horizon. So it can evaporate and also even disappear after some time, yeah. And he said that we must colonize other planets to ensure in the far future our human survival. And I already know we have these environmental problems, like, and uh, traveling is one of the means of recreation also, yeah. And see, there are many, already many um, efforts, yeah, to do so, like Virgin Galactic and Space and SpaceX. Uh, sorry if I reply this again because I need the documentation for the next year's lecture, yeah. So, so you can see here uh, uh, by yourself to YouTube, I already saw. And you see, it's interesting here to see, yeah, like um, how people really, this is uh, already happening, yeah. Uh, that people are already uh, think seriously about space travel, even with a high high cost. Yeah, and these are the space exploration within our solar system. In 2024, we try to colonize Mars, and colonization of Mars means that we try to uh, actually try to live there, to plant there, uh, like uh, to cultivate the soil of Mars for food and for vegetables and so on. Yeah, and also there are. Uh, projects to colonize Venus, yeah, and discover water in the uh, Jupiter's satellites, yeah. Sir, okay. sorry, yes? I think you haven't shared screen. You know, I made another mistake. I haven't shared the screen. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay yeah i will not repeat because it's time wasting yeah so uh and uh, maybe just like two minutes yeah you can see in the slides here already uh what i already told you before yeah so uh one of the important uh discovery is the ability to conduct uh space travel because of the technology and computation power that we already have yeah you can see here um in the youtube channel that we already sent rovers to mars yeah i mean like the pathfinder yeah uh, and also here a uh, picture and video about the mars surface which you can see by yourself please open the link when you have time later yeah <clears throat> and also the space colonization uh, of venus because venus is a uh, Sec, uh, also close to the Earth, but has very different atmosphere and is a very uh, cloudy, yeah, very cloudy planet with a lot of dust in the sky. So it's very hard to really um, go into Venus surface because you have to move through a very, uh, very dense cloud yeah, to do this. Yeah. And also here, uh, when we try yeah, to colonize Venus, we would not be standing on the surface, but rather like be beyond uh, above the cloud of Venus, yeah, because the condition above the cloud is rather uh, inhabitable, yeah, uh, possible to be habitable, yeah. So um, you know, Venus, if there would be a space station that's located, will not directly in the surface, but rather in the atmosphere of Venus, yeah. Okay, so here. Uh, you can see, yeah, um, one of the lecturer of the Department of Physics already make a small contribution, yeah. Patoni, yeah, he's, he has tried to model 
uh, solar cells that is possible to be operated in Venus condition. Yeah, <coughs> and this is interesting. And also, yeah, this um, India, yeah, India is very advanced in space. Also, besides uh, yeah, United States, the European Union, Russia, and China, India is one of uh, the advanced nation in in uh, in the space exploration. Yeah, and Indian probe Chandrayaan one has identified the pressure of uh, presence of water in lunar surface, which is a very uh, interesting topic because. When there is water in the moon, yeah, meaning that there is possibility of life in moon. Yeah. Between 1968 and 1972, America launched nine. Maybe I have to. Share some, okay. Yeah. Between 1960. Between 1968 and 1972, America launched nine human missions to the moon, six of which successfully touched down, allowing 12 men to walk on the lunar surface. NASA's next chapter of lunar exploration, called Artemis, has the task of not just going to the moon to create a long-term human presence on and around it, but also to prepare for ever more complex human missions to Mars. In short, everything we must be able to do here we must first do here. So, what will an Artemis mission look like? Everything is designed and tested with our most important element in mind, the astronauts. This is their deep space, human-rated spacecraft called Orion, built in three parts. The crew module, where up to four astronauts will live and work throughout the flight. The service module, with life support systems for the crew and its own engine and fuel reserves and a launch abort system with engines capable of pulling the crew module to safety during launch should anything go wrong. To accomplish the task of launching our crew and heavy payloads, NASA is building the Space Launch System, comprising of a cargo hold, an exploration upper stage, a massive core stage, and two extended solid rocket boosters. Altogether, this is the world's most powerful rocket, and it exceeds the legendary Saturn V of the Apollo era in numerous ways. Sitting on the launch pad, the entire rocket, fully fueled, weighs just over 6 million pounds, 5.2 million of which is just the fuel. Once ignited, there is no stopping what comes next. All four RS-25 engines and the two solid rocket boosters come to life, thundering our crew upwards. Two minutes after ignition, the solid rocket boosters are spent and released. Eight minutes after launch, the core stage is depleted and separated. The upper stage fires briefly, placing Orion into a parking orbit around the Earth. Here, the crew reconfigure the spacecraft and check systems to confirm everything is ready for deep space travel. With a go from mission control, the crew reignite the exploration upper stage engines to leave Earth entirely. The exact timing of this maneuver is critical to reach a speed that can escape Earth's gravitational pull, but also put Orion on a course that will intersect the moon days later. Once this burn is complete, the upper stage of the SLS is jettisoned and the crew aboard Orion coast for several days toward all that awaits them at the moon. Approaching the moon, we see the fundamental differences between Artemis and Apollo. Instead of requiring Orion to serve as an expendable lunar command module or to carry a constrained lunar lander, the Artemis missions will take advantage of a different approach, pre-staging. Everything needed for lunar missions will be positioned in advance by commercial and international partners. This includes rovers, science experiments, and human-rated systems on the surface. But it also includes a dedicated lunar station in orbit around the moon called Gateway. Here at this station, we can pre-stage a robust lunar lander and establish a strong communications relay. Designed with open standards, the Gateway can be expanded as new missions and partnerships develop, allowing multiple human missions on the moon at the same time and enabling ongoing science to be conducted even between human missions. The Gateway is also capable of adjusting its orbit to allow access to every part of the moon, something the Apollo missions could not do. But the real key in this approach is placing Gateway in a unique halo orbit to perfect the maneuvers needed for Mars missions. And with the growing list of commercial and international opportunities, Gateway is the ideal hub between Earth and all that lies beyond. 
Returning to her crew as they approach Gateway, the Orion must match the elliptical orbit of the station in order to successfully dock. Once on board, pre-selected crew members transfer to the lunar lander, while those assigned to Gateway remain on station. The lunar lander system itself is built for three unique steps. Descending from the halo orbit of Gateway down to a low lunar orbit, descending from low lunar orbit to the surface, and once the lunar mission is complete, launching from the surface of the moon and ascending all the way back to the orbiting gateway. Once back aboard the Orion spacecraft and undocked from gateway, the crew fire their engine once to break out of the halo orbit and once again to sling the spacecraft around the moon, placing it on a multi-day trajectory back towards Earth. As they near the end of this journey, the service module is released and the crew module is oriented heat shield first. Entering Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles per hour, the friction of air slows Orion considerably, while also subjecting it to temperatures of 5,000 degrees. With the Orion now at just 300 miles per hour, a series of parachutes uniquely tested and produced for this moment deploy, decelerating the craft to just 20 miles per hour for splashdown. With each successful mission, Artemis ushers in the next wave of men and women to explore our moon and prove that together we are ready to go beyond. Okay, this is uh, very uh, exciting, yeah, because uh, Apollo program was already closed or uh, inactive for many years. I don't remember when, but. This Artemis project tries to renew humans' uh, interest in the moon, yeah? And um, you can see how uh, interesting the mission will be because uh, the uh, amount of um, information that can be get due to the uh, presence of this lunar um, lunar uh, satellite is already near the moon, yeah? So, it's like they attach and then they come, uh, they come back to this this uh, lunar satellite, yeah, to redock again. And and this is uh, one of the challenge that will happen not in the far future, but uh, in a few years maybe, yeah. And also the search for water will continue, yeah. In it is uh, very possible that in many planets that we talk there is no water, but in fact there could be water. Uh, especially in the planetary satellite system, yeah, like uh, Jupiter has many satellites, yeah, and also uh, <coughs> the possibility to mine, yeah, to use uh, the resources from the asteroids for mining uh, precious materials, yeah, such as gold, silver, and iron, yeah, and also there is a um, possibility that the iron found on Earth. Uh, was once brought by a huge asteroid, yeah. So uh, this uh, fallible metals that human use for uh, for shaping the history of humans and geopolitical wars and so on, used as weapon. This iron material might not be directly coming from the Earth, but produced by the meteorite, yeah. <coughs> and um, yeah, you can see here a website. Uh, that shows the amount of minerals. Yeah, <coughs> we can do a spectroscopy, a spectroscopy to find out the composition of the asteroids. Yeah, this is very interesting. Yeah, and one of the future exploration, is, for example, to find extrasolar planets, habitable zones. Yeah, called the Goldilocks zones and uh, extrasolar planets in the nearby galaxy. Uh, you can see that there is a possibility that there is uh, there are some planets that can be habitable. Yeah, and these are the pictures. Uh, you can find more in the website here. Yeah, and there is also the possibility of a planet called Kepler four four two b, which uh, may be the best hope of mimicking our current. Earth, yeah, Earth is very unique in terms of uh, position, yeah, in our solar system. The Earth is really a perfect place where life can exist, like today, yeah. 
so when the earth was uh, when the earth uh, is not in the exact same position as today i mean in the not the same orbit as today so there is a possibility that life will not be as as it now yeah so it's very precise position of the earth uh, and maybe for some of you you saw this is uh, just coincident right um but it's also a possibility that uh, like god already has uh, uh calculate this yeah so this is really exciting and and when we travel back at the beginning uh, we found out that there is some radiation from the past which is the radiation uh, from the formation of the uh, yeah the release yeah the release of the energy due to the formation of the atoms and this is called the background cosmic microwave uh, radiation which at the beginning is several million kelvin but because of the expansion you know from thermodynamics due to the expansion now the temperature is cooled to only like three kelvin right and this this uh this cooling temperature uh, this radiation with three kelvin temperature it can be found in any direction if we put the radio uh, or the uh we call it parabola maybe yeah to find this uh, microwave in any direction we will find this noise uh, similar which is actually the noise also when you have the old television and you don't have uh, like channels yet you see this background radiation or background noise this shh. it's actually this uh cosmic microwave background yeah which is a radiation from the early universe and this is the one of the dead proof i mean the most convincing proof that uh the universe was once a big uh like uh, once a small point yeah uh, and due to this big bang explosion we then have this kind of universe like now uh you can see here yeah the history of the big bang itself yeah and there are so many interesting picture to show the reasons we are uh in terms of magnitude only a, like a small dust in the in the universe actually yeah you can say it's like insignificant yeah uh and this is one of the astounding things yeah uh, the, the position of the human race, the human beings, is uh, in terms of the grand scale of the universe, is very very small. In in sense, like we just like a dust in the vast amount of the universe. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so this all can be discovered because we understand the physics behind space exploration. Yeah? We have the theory of special relativity, which we study in uh after this yeah we have the general theory of relativity newton and graphene cosmology thermodynamics and so on we have this technology also jet propulsion robotics control system which is all enabled because of quantum mechanics yeah okay so this is the first lecture uh i open for you the question yeah session if you have any question please uh, do it now yeah Okay, we have like only 29 participants. If there is no question, let's go on with the next topic, which is uh, the technicals. Yeah, all the slides you can already read here. Yeah. So, uh, one of the important thing, yeah, uh, is that space and time is not separate but is related to one another and this is uh, one of the consequence of the special theory of relativity which was first uh, discovered by einstein in 1905 and this uh, special theory of relativity was first discovered due to the fact that uh, there is no uh, no medium for light yeah you know like sound waves they move in air water waves they move in this water but the 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 medium in which light travels yeah there is no medium in which the electromagnetic wave or the light travels so light can travel in vacuum without any medium and this was discovered by the michelson marley experiment which result in a negative finding that there is no ether and this negative finding um 
earn them the Nobel Prize. Yeah. So these are the the first American that I think get the Nobel Prize. Yeah. And let's see. A wave is a disturbance in some medium. Water waves are disturbances in water. Sound waves are disturbances in particles of air, water, or some solid. That's why you cannot hear your fellow astronaut scream in space. But what about light? What is its medium? Maybe it's air. But then light from the sun and distant stars reaches us and it has to travel through the nothingness of space. Perhaps the space is not empty and is filled with some mysterious material which is present everywhere, even on Earth. And this is the medium for light. Let's call it something. How about ether? But ether is just our imagination until we can prove its existence. Let's try to prove it. We'll need to set up something like this. For this we'll need a light source, two fully reflective mirrors, a half reflective mirror. A half reflective mirror only reflects half of the light. The other half passes straight through it. We'll also need a detector which will detect the amount of light incident on it. The light source is placed at the bottom center of our setup. The half reflective mirror is placed at the center at a 45 degrees angle to the direction of light emitted from the source. The two reflective mirrors are placed at the right and at the top of our setup making a 90 degree angle at the center. The mirrors are placed at exactly the same distance from the center. Let's emit a beam of light from the source. It will hit the half reflective mirror which is placed at 45 degrees angle at the center of our setup. Half of the light passes through this mirror and the other half gets reflected. The two mirrors which are precisely at the same distance from the center mirror reflect back the light towards the center again. Here they combine as they head to the detector. Now the point to note is as the mirrors are placed exactly at the same distance the light reflected from them will reach back at the exact same instant of time and both the waves will get added together. Let's backtrack a little and see how waves get added. The higher point in the waves are called peaks and the lowermost points the troughs. Let's say we have two similar waves which are in phase. that ether does not exist and light does not need a medium. Okay, this is a very good explanation. Although the English is not native English, it's just like me, Japanese English is this Indian English. Yeah. Uh, whatever, um, this is very good. I think the 
that shows that there is no medium for like and this is a uh, important consequences yeah the consequences is the postulate of special relativity it will travel at the same speed for any observer which is a uh, moving in an inertial frame of reference on the frame of reference with constant velocity each other. So uh, this shows that there is no medium needed for the propagation of light. Yeah, Because there is no change whether you rotate the system or you do the experiment at different time. There is no ether that influences. It is a, a result, as I said before, in the Einstein postulates which is the building block for the theory of special relativity. Yeah. First, the laws of physics uh, must be the same in all inertial frame because we cannot distinguish from moving with constant velocity and at rest. Yeah. For example, you are in a car and the car moving in constant velocity, everything is so smooth, you cannot distinguish between a car that is in the parking place or that is moving with constant velocity. Yeah. So it is actually relative. Therefore, the law of physics must be the same for all of them. Yeah. Whether you move in constant velocity or whether you are in rest. Yeah. Okay. And there is the formula for the velocity addition. For example, here, yeah, <coughs> you have a. I may have to draw this because otherwise you don't understand so clearly here. Yeah. You have here, uh, like, let's say, train, yeah, a train, <laughs> and you have here someone, yeah, who is throwing a object like a ball, yeah, from the train. The cell velocity of the train is v a. This is the velocity of the train, v a velocity of the relative to someone who is standing in the station, yeah. So he will see that the train is moving at velocity v a, and uh, according to this man, yeah, uh, he release he release yeah the ball at velocity v b a. So the question is according to this person, what is the velocity of the ball? Yeah, according to the person in the train, the velocity is v b a. Yeah. But according to this person, yeah, the velocity is Vb. So he can calculate Vb is equal to this formula here, right? Uh, and this is already account for the special theory of relativity, already account for the postulates of Einstein here, yeah? So in this case, you have a relativistic velocity addition formula, yeah? Okay. And then, this results also this postulate is uh, the interesting notion of time dilation yeah so when an object is moving relative to the stationary yeah uh, according to the observer on earth yeah the time yeah of this astronaut yeah the time let's say the 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 astronaut um pulls yeah yeah, you have uh, like the new jantung, yeah, pulse, yeah, uh, is according to the astronaut, yeah, according to the astronaut, again, according to him, the pulse is his pulse, yeah, his pulse is the same, is the proper time, yeah, because measured at by a stationary observer, the astronaut. So the astronaut will feel that the time of the pulse, yeah, his heart pulse is just normal. Yeah, is the proper time. According to the observer on the Earth, however, because the astronaut is moving relative to the woman here, to the observer on the Earth, the pulse will not uh, take a strike line. Yeah, for the astronaut, the pulse will be like this: a signal, time signal of the pulse will be just straight, long line like this. But for the woman observer on the Earth. The pulse is not straight, but will travel a uh, like um, a triangle, like a triangle here. Yeah. So the time of one pulse is longer. Therefore, if here, for example, five pulses happens, five pulses likes giving five seconds. 
here five pulses of the astronaut relative to the woman is longer than five seconds yeah and the woman measure it to be the time measured by the uh, <coughs> a person who sees a moving observer so this means according to the man the pulse is the proper time his pulse is the proper time according to the observer on the earth the pulse of the man is the uh, time measure yeah yeah <coughs> so this is called time dilation which is a relativistic effect yeah so uh, this means that the astronaut will become younger than the observer on earth according to the observer on earth yeah because when uh, she for example celebrates uh, 60th birthday he <coughs> she sees that the astronaut is only celebrating the 58th birthday for example because why <coughs> Because the astronaut time is longer than the observer, and this has been proved uh, already proved by the atomic clock, which can measure a very small amount of time uh, duration that is installed on the flying airplane. Yeah, the flying airplane installed an atomic clock here. After traveling for several years, the time is not the same as the time on the Earth. The difference is only 0 0.001 second. Yeah, but this is already a proof now. If the um, if the time is uh, if the object is moving closer to the speed of light, the time dilation will be longer. Yeah, the effect will be stronger. We have this formula here: t zero divided by the square of one minus v square. Yeah. So this is the velocity of the satellite at uh, the space yeah, sp spaceship. So here we have the conclusion. T is always larger than T0 because this is always larger than one. Uh, this is always larger than one. Yeah, This is smaller than one, but overall something divided by smaller than one is larger. Yeah, so this is called the gamma factor. The gamma factor is always smaller than that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, sorry. We have this, yeah. <coughs> yeah, this is called the time dilation. Yeah. So this is relativity, yeah, meaning that the time flows not the same, but because we move not in, in the speed close to light, we find that this effect is not so significant. Yeah, but for objects moving very fast, like uh, cosmic rays, cosmic radiation, yeah, the time dilation can be felt very, uh, very clearly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nah. So here you can see also phenomena of length contraction. Yeah. Uh, length contraction if when the object is moving close to the speed of light, for an observer. Yeah. We measure in, in the Earth, yeah. We measure that the length is a little bit contracted, a little bit smaller than the astronaut, which is uh, stationary to the spaceship. So the astronaut in the spaceship will observe that the length is only L, L0. But for the person here on Earth, the length is L, which is smaller than L0. Yeah. And the formula is equal to this, yeah. 1 minus v squared per c squared times L0. And this is uh, called the length contraction. Yeah, It's called the length contraction. Okay. Yeah. And we also have this famous formula. Uh, e is equal to mc squared, which is a result of the relativistic kinetic energy or relativistic mass. The relativistic mass is given by this formula. This is the rest mass uh, or the mass measure at rest. Yeah. So m is always larger than m0 because this is always smaller than one. Yeah. This gamma factor. Yeah. yeah. So uh, moving object. Moving objects always uh, 
has according to the stationary person longer time ya yeah, and also smaller length ya yeah. oke okay. a good example ya yeah, is the case of muon ya yeah. I will give you an example of muon. Muon are uh, particles from the uh, cosmic, from our other, from other parts uh, of the galaxy, or just like from outer space. They travel with very high velocity. Yeah, they travel with very high velocity, and when they go into our atmosphere, uh, they will only have the lifetime of half. So they will not reach the Earth surface, yeah. This is the Earth surface. So they will not reach the Earth surface only half. Uh, according to the Moon, yeah, uh, their time is t zero. According to the Moon, their lifetime is t zero. But according to the person on Earth, the lifetime of Moon is t. Okay, because according to us, the Moon is moving. So. The experiment shows the experiment shows that some of the muons, the cosmic particles, some of the muons can actually indeed reach the surface of the Earth. Yeah, how is this possible? Some of the muons can travel as far as going to the surface of the Earth. Yeah, according to the stationary uh, observer like us, yeah, that stay in the surface of the Earth, the muon has a longer lifetime then t0 why because the moon is moving so actually according to us the moon now has a lifetime of t is equal to t0 divided by the gamma factor gamma factor is equal to 1 minus v squared per c squared and the result is because of this time dilation according to us the moon has time dilation yeah this is interesting the moon because of time duration has longer uh, longer time longer lifetime so it can reach the surface of the earth but according to the moon no according to the moon yeah uh, the distance uh, the time of life is, is equal to t0 so how is it possible for the moon to reach the earth surface the answer lies in the uh, length contraction according to the muon the distance of the earth is not l0 but the distance of the earth is l because the everything outside the muon is contracting yeah uh, so l is equal to l0 right divided by gamma yeah gamma is this uh, So according to the muon, the distance now is contracting. The distance of contracting is now given by the red distance here. Okay. No, okay. So this is the red distance according to the muon. The space is contracting according to us. The time is dilating. So this is relativity. Both are correct. Yeah. Uh, according to us, the distance between the muon and the L surface is L0. But according to the muon, the distance is L, which is given by the red line. Yeah. So this is an import, uh, interesting example of the relativity. That time and space is relative, but this absolute is only the speed of light. Yeah. The speed of light, which is 3 to the power of 10 meters per second. Okay, yeah, this is an interesting example. Yeah. And the general theory of relativity is another uh, interesting subject, yeah, which discuss uh, the relation between the uh, space time curvature and the energy momentum are is equal to the amount of energy and momentum which describes the distribution of matter. So in the in this sense, uh, gravity is the deformation of space time by a mass, uh, massive objects such as planets or uh, uh, stars. Yeah. So because of this bending like this, yes, yeah, space time, according to this theory of general relativity, there is no gravitational force actually, 
but that is there is only space time curvature so what happens is that this ball will continue to move in the orbit because the earth like the the, the moon yeah will be in this curvature because the the earth is producing us uh, this kind of curvature around the the earth yeah so this is called the einstein tensor curvature here because of the presence of the mass yeah okay until this point do you have any question no question all of you are very like excited or maybe very sleepy yeah so the last lecture is about uh Hmm. Fiction, yeah. This is the last lecture. Physics of science fiction. Okay. Let me just talk to someone because I'm afraid nobody is listening now. Okay. Alia Maulida, are you still uh are you still watching this lecture? Yes sir. yes, sir. Okay, good to hear. You look very tired, your son. Uh, <laughs> is that because the subject is so hard, or you just uh, feel tired or something else? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah. I have uh, three slides, and I would like to finish this in like ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah, Teddy, do you have something to say? No, sir. Okay, yeah, in 10 minutes, I will say goodbye to you. <laughs> okay, so just hold on for more 10 minutes, yeah? Uh, Surya, hello. <clears throat> okay, Surya. I would like to ask actually for those of you who can turn on the video to turn on the video. To enlighten the spirit of this lecture if you want you just turn on the video is okay for me yeah uh so that you can see your friends too yeah uh i know that it has been a tough time for you because it's already like two years that we don't meet yeah uh <laughs> don't know this is a long time yeah more than i mean uh, since the beginning yeah I haven't been able to see you directly in in class, so this for me is also a challenge. Yeah, uh, yeah, because then I don't really know you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't really meet you in person, and this is uh, something that is also problem of his uh, communication. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but however, whatever I mean, uh, uh, I hope that that yeah this lecture can also be useful for you even though in this condition yeah of COVID yeah yeah <laughs> okay shall we go on with the last slide <laughs> not yes. to using yes let's go on with the yeah actually before the slide i have some small story a fictional story for you because this is about fictional stories but I hope you like the story, yeah. Because uh, when I'm bored, me and my wife, we used to go outside and just try to shop, yeah, like uh, buying for daily needs and something like that, yeah. Maybe you go with your mom, or maybe you go with your boyfriend or girlfriend, yeah. And at the time, uh, even though COVID conditions, yeah, the the supermarket is very full and. I really want to shop something because uh, <coughs> there is one of my favorite food there. The I, I I really like this roasted chicken. You know, when I was in Austria, actually I tried to go out and buy this chicken. It's like for euros, like sixty thousand rupiah. Is grilled chicken actually, and it tastes very good. It's uh, very hard to find in Indonesia. And this, but at the time the supermarket, yeah, the supermarket was really full. And I was really disappointed to find that uh, my wife is really uh, afraid because there are so many people. Let's just go home. Let's just go home. And I said, no, no. Uh, I really want to get that chicken. I really want to eat it. I don't care if 
there are so many people because we just need to avoid them. It's so hard, yeah. And during the time, um, yeah, I showed to my wife, let's go, just just buy the chicken, just buy the chicken, yeah, just buy the chicken, and uh, she really um, she really um, like um, trying to pursue me. I was like, no, 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 please, no, please, no, yeah. And I, and and I, I I I take her, yeah. I'm a I'm a crow. <laughs> let's go let's buy some chicken, and after that you can. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I think I really want to have that chicken. <coughs> and during that time, you see, everyone, um, so many people really, and it's it's a little bit scary. And eh? I never see, <coughs> uh, like uh, her really like um, uh, trying to go home. Yeah, trying to go away from me and said, just buy the chicken. Yeah, and 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 after that, uh, also when I get the chicken, yeah. Uh, I go out and uh, at that time we don't have the uh, I don't bring the car so I just order the grab yeah? and even during the during the time she really is, is angry yeah? like she's really angry and uh, really wants to go out and say we are already get chicken yeah so uh, I'm very excited I just look at the chicken all the time yeah I just look at the chicken all the time <laughs> and uh, even after home yeah? uh, after we go home yeah and you know, I'm so I'm so confused. Why is she so angry with me? Why she's trying to, like, avoiding me? Yeah, <laughs> and you know the fact. And when I look at her, I, I I don't know. I was really really like screaming. Yeah, because when I found out when I went home, uh, uh, going out from the taxi, I found that this woman is not my wife. Yeah, that's. That's the reason why she's cry, uh, screaming. Yeah, I, I brought another woman. So okay. <laughs> okay, this is just fiction story. Of course, this doesn't happen. Yeah, if this happened, I'm really an idiot because I bring someone home. It's not my wife. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that you laugh at this time whenever you are. Yeah. If you don't laugh, I say then you have a very bad sense of humor. Okay. <clears throat> so no wonder she scream. Yeah, because that's not my wife. Yeah, okay. I brought someone else from the supermarket home. I'm a crazy person, okay. So, <clears throat> what has this story any relation with your physics? Yeah, because we are, actually there is no serious relation. <laughs> the only thing is that we are talking about fiction, yeah? And today we are talking about science fiction, just like 10 minutes, yeah? Please, I want to have your time for 10 minutes. And after that, you can do what you want, yeah? Okay, the physics of science fiction. Da, 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 da. Yeah. When I was a small kid, yeah, I used to love to watch this. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, watching Star Wars. Yeah, uh, and also Star Trek. You know, this this captain in the board of the starship Enterprise. Yeah, ah, I forget his name. Yeah. Any one of you knows the name of the captain of the Starship Enterprise in the story of Star Trek series? Who was this bold guy? Uh, anyone can tell me the name of the person? Captain who? Uh, this bold guy in the Star Trek series. Come on. Anyone? Huh? Yeah, this one. Yeah, Captain. <coughs> yeah, this is Yen Lupika's the name. Yeah, ah, come on. Who, who is the name of this? Captain Kirk. Yeah, Captain Kirk. How to pronounce? Yeah, he's one of my favorite uh, actor. And there is also this kind of uh, 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 what? Where the people can be transported using this beam. Yeah, so beam is copy. And then suddenly they are transported to another place. Yeah, maybe uh, when you are in 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 uh, you have this device, you also want to be transported to another place. Yeah, I want to be transported in Paris. Be me, Scotty. Boom, boom, yeah, in Paris. Oh, that is oh really <laughs> something very very uh, exciting. Yeah? yeah, I want to be transported uh, where, for example, Bali. You go to Bali. Yeah. But you're unlucky, your transport in Bali in the what? In the septic tank? Oh, no. <laughs> okay. You're not in the toilet. 
<laughs> okay, so <laughs> transport uh, is one of the science fiction. But the uh, question is, yeah, is it possible that this will happen in the future, or maybe in our kids' uh, lifetime, or our yeah, younger generation, millennial generation, like hundred generation from now? Let's explore the possibility. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Okay, the objective of this lecture. This is actually a very interesting lecture. Yeah, understanding the physical concept behind science fiction and find these mistakes and inconsistencies. For example, in the Star Wars, yeah, <coughs> there's called this lightsaber. Yeah, no, I don't have this lightsaber. No, <laughs> actually, I don't have lightsaber. Yeah, but this lightsaber, yeah, uh, Luke Skywalker usually use this green lightsaber. This is minis, <laughs> minis. And is it possible in physics to have this lightsaber? It turns out that it's very difficult. Yeah, because why? Because um, it's very hard to make a laser like a saber because the laser will extend. Yeah, you don't have a light saber, but you have a lot, a big light. Uh, what you call a big light um, uh, <coughs> laser? Not saber, but laser. Yeah, so the light will not stop in certain amounts, like in Star Wars race. Yeah. And also, it's hard to have very high energy uh, light concentrated in this kind of uh, amount. Yeah. So, lightsaber is something still fiction today. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And you have this kind of uh, movies here, yeah, which I think you already know. This is the Avenger and Game, and also Interstellar. Both are very, very nice movies. I already watched them. I think you already watched them too, yeah. If you have Netflix, you can watch them, yeah. So this is uh, we like to explore, yeah, the concept of the physics, the thermodynamics, theory of relativity, quantum theory, and all the aspects of uh, time travel, yeah. <coughs> so our focus will be in this movie, so, yeah. <coughs> Captain Marvel, yeah, and man, and also <coughs> Interstellar, yeah. <coughs> so nature is interesting, but also complex. You know? <coughs> so many uh, factors can affect yeah, the condition of <coughs> the result or output. For example, the <coughs> climate <coughs> or natural disaster in one place can be caused just by a small effect in other place. Yeah. Even like a butterfly wings, a butterfly wings that is moving can affect uh, the weather in, a, in a other places yeah. because of this complexity and non-linearity. So understanding the complexity of nature can only be obtained through the holistic or comprehensive approach. Yeah. So we have to understand all the things and we don't really understand all the things right now. Yeah. In fact, we only understand little things, like five percent, because we don't know dark energy and dark matter. Yeah. <clears throat> According to the law of thermodynamics, the second law, a universe is a closed system whose disorder continues to increase. Yeah. So disorder always tends to increase. You wake up in the morning. I'm not sure your hair will be like messed up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like my hair now is quite good because. <laughs> I comb my hair, yeah, comb my hair. But when you wake up in the morning, usually your hair is not like this, yeah. Uh, it can be more uh, chaotic because isolated system disorder will increase, yeah. In thermodynamics, this is called entropy, yeah, the degree of disorder. Heat always flows as a result from spontaneously from the cooler, no, from the hotter to the cooler, yeah. This is based on the second law of thermodynamics, which allows the time to move in one direction. Yeah, and we have this general theory of relativity, the structure of space-time, the fabric of space-time. According to John Wheeler, mass tells space-time how to curve, and space-time tells mass how to move. Yeah. And because light can bend be objects with large mass as a consequence, yeah. Our time is based on the traveling of the light. 
So if the light can be bent by a mass, means that near the massive object, the time is not the same as near a non-massive object. In this case, when you know the interstellar movie, yeah, a very massive black hole can cause time to flow more slowly than when there is no black hole. That is the reason why when uh, Captain Cooper is near a Gargantua black hole, the time will feel more slowly than the people in the Earth. Yeah, This is called time dilation because of the massive object. And this black hole is actually the picture of the first observed black hole. We uh, have already the ability for the first time to directly photograph a black hole. And this is how it looks like. Yeah. <clears throat> so the black hole is actually a star yeah, or object that light cannot escape because of the huge amount of gravity. Even the light cannot escape. Yeah, we know that everything that goes up must come down, but for light, usually escape it because of the high velocity. Because of the concentration of mass, light will come back. Yeah, And this means that the object uh, is trapped forever in this called the black hole. Yeah, Outside the black hole, we cannot see anything. It's dark because even light cannot escape. Yeah? And the, the horizon or the diameter of this black hole is called the Schwarzschild radius. Yeah. The radius of the horizon is called the Schwarzschild radius. And if our star were a black hole, yeah, then its mass must be very large, as you can see here. Yeah. But this is not the case. Yeah. So our star can be seen. You can imagine what happened if our star were a black hole. We still rotate the star, but we cannot see the yellow color of the, star, of the sun. Yeah. Okay. And also for very large mass, there also exists possibility of singularity. Now, the interesting point is if we can move into something like this and we see that there will be an out, out door called the wormhole. Right? So we can go in and we can get out uh, at uh, a point, a different space with different time. Yeah. So this is, uh, but until now, we don't observe a wormhole. Yeah? It's a wormhole, yeah. It's called also the Einstein Rosen Bridge in more technical terms. The ability to travel through time using this kind of wormhole. Until now, it's not observed, but according to the theory of general relativity, such objects should not uh, be ruled out. Yeah, it can exist. It can exist. Uh, using the wormhole, we can try to travel past distance time. Even if, uh, but <laughs> we still don't know because what will happen when we enter it. There is a. Uh, possibility of time travel yeah? as long as there is a closed time like curve you can read by yourself what is the closed time like curve yeah is a uh, closed time because is a system that connects us yeah uh today and tomorrow yeah it connects us but it must be closed otherwise we will not come back to our universe i mean we don't we don't come back to our world but we will uh, go uh, which result in the impossibility to time travel. Yeah, only if mathematics show only if close time like course like this exists. Yeah, the condition exists, then we can do time travel. But if there's no close time like course like this, it's not possible. Yeah. Okay. But the problem with CTC or close time curve is that it can also, uh, if you study further, yeah, uh, forbidden by the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah, because as I say, uh, this order must increase. Yeah, but in this in this case, yeah, the second term, uh, like of second law of thermodynamic can be violated. So this will produce grandfather paradox. You know, for example, yeah, you go back to in time and you kill your grandmother. Oh my God! And the question is, will you still exist when you kill your grandmother? Because logically, your mother will not be born. Yeah. So this is the grandfather paradox. Surprisingly, parallel universe allow us to do this because when we go back so, uh, through a CTC loop, yeah, we will uh, face that we are different universe. In our universe, everything is normal, only that we don't exist anymore. We disappear. But in the parallel universe, we can meet with ourselves yeah, in the past. Like when we were a small kid, we can meet us in the small kid and we, we kill our grandmother. We will still exist because we have in different universe. We are in a different universe called parallel universe. So it doesn't affect anything in the current universe. Yeah. 
you know, this mathematics is crazy results. Like the object will be trapped in black hole and so on. Yeah. Time to the travel to the future. Yes, possible by physics. Yeah, but maybe <laughs> because uh, something that is possible may not happen. But according to some physicists, everything that is possible must exist. Yeah. So, but uh, until now, I haven't found anything who said that uh, convinced me that he already have space travel. Yeah. Uh, future travel, for example, yeah. Until now, there is for me. I never meet a person directly and convince me like that. Yeah. Even though some people say that uh, there are some meet some people from the other, but most of them are just like uh, sensationalism. Yeah. Just want to get viral and something. Like that. Yeah. Just go. Yeah. Just go is <laughs> is uh like you you say like uh just just be younger 10 years <laughs> just go to the nearest black hole and stay for a while that's actually one of the solution travel to the future is not so hard actually yeah <laughs> relative to you go back to the past yeah just go to the nearest black hole what's the nearest black hole in our galaxy thousands of light years <laughs> so it's not just go yeah it's not it's, it's far difficult yeah so Captain Marvel and the Avenger, yeah, this is a story from Marvel, yeah. Uh, you you already know maybe this story, but here when Captain Joseph Cooper go in the black hole, some people say he will not survive because of the high amount of gravity. He will feel the spaghetti effect. Yeah, spaghetti effect means that the head and the feet will differ, have very different gravitational force acting, yeah, and he will be spaghettified and probably die yeah, because of this effect yeah but uh, any calculation in beyond the horizon inside the black hole is still uh, like speculative yeah so everything can happen actually it isn't possible that you survive yeah? but myself I, I don't want to be a experimental rabbit to go inside yeah because i still want to live yeah okay and so i will be very famous if i can come out uh, alive yeah Okay. So in, in quantum world, yeah, there is this wireless called the double slit experiment. When you shine a beam of particles, usually you have this effect like uh, the particle will align here. Yeah, because this is like marbles, but they can produce the wave phenomena of interference, like dark bright, dark bright interference due to like the Michelson Morley experiment. Yeah, because you have two source source here, you produce interference like dark yeah, because of this phase difference here yeah so this is a particle they are particles how can they produce this this is the weirdness of quantum world particle can behave like wave in a very small scale yeah this is the double slit experiment we don't know why but we see this must come from a special property of quantum that we not found in daily object life yeah <coughs> So particle can be have like particle if we observe. Now this is another weirdness. If we observe where they go, they behave like particle. But we we don't observe. They can be at any place at the same time, at more than one place at the same time. This is weirdness. Yeah. When we observe and we don't observe, it's different result. Give different result. This is really strange. Yeah. So this is another weirdness. The observer will affect the measurement. We look at it and we don't look at it, we'll produce different results. Yeah. So therefore the two famous person, like Einstein said, do you really believe in the, that the moon is not there when you're not looking? So according to this uh, interpretation here, yeah, if we look, it will change the experiment. Therefore, if we don't look at the moon, the moon will be in a different location than now. Yeah, this is the consequence and Einstein said, yeah, do you really believe the moon is not there when you are knocking, not looking? We call this realism. Yeah, meaning that uh, yeah, this is called the realism. Yeah, and God doesn't play dice. That God doesn't play dice is determinism, which means that the laws of quantum mechanic must be determined just like Newton law. But as you see, there is some uh, probabilistic, yeah. Like we cannot say that the next particle will come in one, two, three, four, five. 
it can be one the next one can also be still one the third one can be two the fourth one can be five we don't know which is the, the correct arrangement yeah so uh, quantum theory is uh, probabilistic yeah yeah so like this stop telling god what to do is interdeterminism probabilistic yeah yeah do you really believe the moon is not there when you are looking at it? if we don't believe that the moon is there if we don't believe that oh the moon must the moon must be there whether we look or not the moon must be there this is called realism but experiment in quantum mechanics show that we look and not can produce different outcomes so the question the answer of current physicists many of them say yes it can be it's called the no no realism yeah? meaning that everything will emerge if we observe it first yeah this point uh human conscience will react to the materialism this is some kind of like magic yeah? <laughs> like indian or like eastern tradition yeah and the involvement of our mind to the presence of object is very interesting subject so yeah philosophical discussion until now we are still not sure about this yeah and also this many world interpretation because of what because of the parallel universe uh, will is possible due to quantum mechanic interpretation yeah so it's like when you go to the space time travel you can arrive in different universe not the this universe with a universe very alike to our universe yeah? and this is one of the solution of the quantum problem yeah which you will learn when you study physics more deeply so there are two two main interpretation called the copenhagen versus many worlds in the copenhagen interpretation every measurement is probabilistic and there is only one universe so meaning that after you throw the dice for example uh, the result before you observe can be in six different basis uh, or six different results yeah? one two three four five six but after you observe only one state comes yeah one condition come out but in the many world observation when you throw a dice you can be in six different universe yeah <laughs> like when i go to the supermarket it's possible that i take my wife in other universe i don't take my wife yeah <laughs> so when you are angry that your football team never win the world cup don't be so sad because in other universe your team might win the world cup 10 times <laughs> yeah so yeah again this discussion about close uh, time uh, this loop yeah uh, was first discussed by the physicist david deutsch and is the basic of the uh, film of the avenger end game film yeah so uh, to be able to go past the time you have to experience the realm of quantum and the realm of quantum only happen when your size is less than like 10 nanometers less than 100 nanometers so the persons in the time travel must shrink yeah and uh, that's why uh, <coughs> for example <coughs> and men can travel past time yeah uh, and also here in the end game also this is a interpretation of many worlds yeah because when they try to kill thanos and succeedly kill thanos in the beginning of the film this actually uh, they are in a different universe timeline different world line rather than when thanos uh, succeed to kill them all yeah using the snap finger snap yeah so so this is the uh, apa? Uh, this is um one of the proof that the uh, end game is possible yeah but still what is fiction actually as we say this discussion of close timeline curvature yeah maybe violate the second law of thermodynamics so uh, many people say that the second law of thermodynamics one of the most fundamental law in physics yeah uh, which has uh, the same uh, rating or even higher higher rating than the conservation of energy itself yeah the second law of thermodynamics has been proven to never been violated yeah and this is the problem here yeah and also looks like that we we really never found someone from the past visit us right yeah so it's one maybe this is <clears throat> forbidden by the laws of nature yeah we don't know maybe this is the one so that gods protect our space time <laughs> yeah it's not possible otherwise this is really dangerous like right? you 
make football match, you lose, and then you go back in time and restart the match again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. These are the, the things that is the problem still. Yeah. How to reduce the space between atomic nucleus? So you have to really think very far, very small. This is a still fiction. Yeah. And how can they overcome the second law of thermodynamics? Okay, thank you, students. Any questions? Yeah. Have you any questions? Do you feel like you study physics and then you understand the film more better? Yeah. Oh, what are they doing? Oh, they are doing quantum uh, time travel because in quantum mechanics, time is not so clear between past, present, and future. Therefore, you can go to another time using this uh, when you sing to the quantum realm. Yeah? There are many fictions still, like uh, speculation, and of course, speculation can be wrong. Yeah, but for now, just enjoy the movie, right? Okay, this is the last of our lecture. Yeah, so I hope you enjoy the lecture. It has been an amazing journey, right? I mean, okay, um, maybe you, what is this all useful for me? I think, yeah. I, I always believe um, to become, yeah, to become uh, a person, yeah, a civilized or developed person, you don't only think about technology and what's useful for your stomach, it's useful for your needs, your yeah, clothes, yeah, uh, food, and some. But also useful for your mind to be able to know your position in the cosmos, in the vast amount of space, to understand, yeah, to be humble, to know how small we are in this vast amount of universe, yeah, to know that we have some dreams, yeah, humans have some dreams, to explore outer space, yeah, and this all is making our species very unique, yeah in the sense that we have the ability to think and memorize to think yeah and one of the highest intelligence is be able to make humor yeah to to make you laugh yeah so this uh, is an interesting uh, subject yeah it doesn't have to be related directly to what you do but at least okay i i pass my university degree i become a more uh, knowable person uh, I feel more aware about my presence in the universe. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I want to ask someone. Yeah. <coughs> uh, I like to talk with Pafin because he's always in good in good spirit. Pafin Kumar. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, Pafin. Um, is this lecture interesting for you? Please answer honestly it's okay if you feel bored or something just what's your opinion on the lecture so far i feel it's interesting sir especially when you related it to the avengers endgame theory about yeah. the quantum physics yeah that's the part which i feel was interesting for me yeah because you already uh, like watched the movie yeah, yeah and you you maybe some part of the movies you don't really understand and until now maybe you still don't understand but at least you know that it has something related with physics right yeah yeah and that this quantum world weirdness can produce this kind of fiction into a reality maybe not in the near future but at least it's not so uh contradicting with the scientific understanding right i mean it's still a fiction, but it's not just blatant fiction, but it has some basis scientific foundation, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So you are interesting to make movies too? <laughs> like become <laughs> a executive no, sir, producer? No, no sir? Uh, yeah. No. Okay. okay. So because you choose to become a good veterinary doctor, right? Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, uh, when you were when you were a kid, uh, like smaller than now. Uh, have you been a favorite of science fiction movie or not? Oh uh, yes, sir. Yeah. What movie? Can you can you give me one example? Star Wars or something? Yeah, I used to watch Star Wars since I was childhood. Okay. Still now I still watch it. Uh, yeah. 
Which character do you want to play? <laughs> so I'll prefer choosing the Dark Rider, sir. So, oh, so you have a Dark Force. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Uh, you want to be Anakin, Anakin Skywalker, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, because he is like once he was a good person, and then because of his betray, uh, betrayed by people, manipulated by people, he become a very strong but dark-hearted person. Yeah. Yes. Okay, it's very nice. Um, Uh, okay, thank you, Pavin. Right, so welcome. Uh, yeah, Muhammad Ra. Who is this? Ramadan. Oh, Muhammad Ra. What? What's this? What's your name? Muhammad Ramadan. Yeah, Muhammad Ramadan. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah. Your name is Muhammad Ramadan. Muhammad Ramadan. Okay. When when you look, uh, listen at this lecture, what do you find interesting? Space travel or fiction? What's interesting? Uh, like when you were a small kid, you used to watch some interesting science fiction movie. Yes, yeah, the time travel. Ah, time travel. Okay, when you when you could time travel, yeah. Uh, who will you visit? A person, certain person, or? Uh, you have plan when you can try and travel. You want to travel to the future or to the past? To the future. To the future. Oh, okay. And to the past also. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you when you go to the future, right? Uh, you. What will you tell the future generation if they interview you of in front of a, the future society or future people? What will you tell them? <laughs> um. About the COVID, maybe. Yeah, that's interesting. And maybe about the environmental problems that you face nowadays, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you will see a more green approach to the energy solution in the future, and uh, maybe your your money will be worth like thousand of times. Yeah. If you can travel to the future and you you buy some bitcoins now, maybe your bitcoins will be worth like. A million times now, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay. You can buy. You can be very rich, right? You buy some cryptocurrency now, and then you sell in the future. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, okay. Thank you, uh, Jessica Naila. Perhaps, <laughs> Jessica. Hello, Jessica. Hello. Oh, I thought you were sleeping. Oh. So, what do you think about this lecture before we all say goodbye to each other? No, only to me. Yeah? Oh, poor me. Uh, I hope uh, that you enjoy the lecture. So, what's your opinion about yeah, think, this lecture? Um, it's it's always interesting when it comes to uh, talking about the space and science fiction. But personally, when I was a a child i wasn't really a fan of you know uh, fan fiction movies mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah i wasn't really curious about that but until i was in middle school and middle school i was actually kind of interested in astronomy because i had i had a best friend and she likes astronomy so she yeah she she likes to tell me about it well, interesting so you are very interested in the um, formation of galaxies in, in the uh, in the position of our universe, in how a universe is, where our place is in the universe, and so on. The discussion about the planets and so on. You're really interested in the in, in this in astronomy, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So most of us, you know, are interested in astrology. <laughs> astrology is like the <laughs> movement of stars. Yeah. But uh, I think it's very good start to become. Uh, uh, intelligent person if you love astronomy yeah? have you been to planetario uh, have you been yet, to sir. yeah because there's a planetarium in jakarta yeah and uh, maybe uh where are you located right now if i may know in uh, i'm in bogor ah you're in bogor so yeah there is a planetarium in jakarta yeah? actually there is a you know this kind of big screen above you where you can see and there they will be active, like active real-time 
position of the stars and also the story of Hubble and something like that. I think you, you, when COVID is over, or maybe you can visit this planetarium. I have a good friend there who usually give the talk uh, in this uh, planetarium. Yeah, but thank you for your answer. Okay. Now, any one of you wants to comment on this lecture? Anyone? Just speak up if you want to say something. <coughs> okay. If not, then maybe it's time to end this lecture. But before that, if you have uh, the ability to turn on your video. Maybe I want to make a picture, a screenshot that I will share in the group. Yeah, that our lecture has ended. Yeah. So if you have time, please turn on the video now. Yeah. Full. Okay. So I think we should do this. A long time ago, just everyone activate the video. Yeah, I feel alive. Yeah, not talking to just a uh, ah, this is really nice. Okay, this is a super class. Okay, okay, you know what I see in front of my screen? I see future people who has very high probability to be successful persons. Okay. Uh, and I will tell you, yeah, the secret to be success it, for me is when you fall down, never give up and you move up. You stand up again and fight again for another day. Just determine, yeah, study hard and then success will come. Yeah, there is no one that can be successful without falling down. Yeah. So I'm very proud of this international class. Yeah, I hope that you can uh, be successful in your uh, goals or pursuit. Okay, so I'll make a photo once more again, but this time please give a smile. Okay, wait. So this is really great. Okay, thank you all. Don't turn off the video. Uh, maybe there are some words before we close this lecture. Okay, if there is no words, maybe uh, one of the uh, head of the class can give final remarks about about this class. Who is the who is your leader? Yeah. No. Or someone that can represent your class. No, no one. Uh, okay. Actually, uh, our leader is Rara, but looks like she's not here. She's not here. Ah, oh, because I think she missed some important time today. Because I. Uh, I had a really great time talking to you. So, okay, uh, whatever I think, uh, yeah, I hope that this is not the last time we meet, yeah? And I hope that you will keep your motivation until the end of your uh, study in IBB University, yeah? And you can be proud, yeah? IBB University, one of the 500 best universities and one of the best in Indonesia. So. Please keep your dreams alive and stay healthy. Be careful of, uh, yeah, social, keep social distancing always, okay? No, no, I talk too much, I think, yeah, because I don't want this to end, actually, yeah? Uh, <laughs> because during this COVID, everybody feels lonely, right? Uh, yeah, you will all, yeah? Uh, become good friends because you see like this yeah this is not the same when you meet together but still it's better than without video okay so i must stop now yeah uh, bye bye everyone yeah and i hope that you once again yeah have 
uh, nice time, yeah, and also have all pass the physics exam with good marks. Okay, whatever happens, please don't stop trying. Okay, bye bye all. Goodbye. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, 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 sir. Bye. You may leave now. Bye-bye.